Okay, there we go. Technical difficulties. All right, nine point two. Box and whisker plot. Uh, this is called a box and whisker because basically there's a box and then there's whiskers. Like a cat, yes. <laughs> or a dog. Okay, so a, a set of data can be summarized by using five key statistics called the five number summary. Five number summary. I'm going to repeat that again. To make a box of whisker, we need the five number summary. Okay. So the five numbers we have are the median, which we call Q2. <coughs> this is the middle number, which we just talked about. So the middle number is the median. <coughs> Then we have the lower quartile, Q1. That's the halfway mark of the lower half, a quarter of the way. And then we have the upper quartile, Q3, which is the halfway point of the upper half. Then we have the minimum and maximum. And these are the two numbers that give us the range, right? The minimum and the maximum, the lowest to the highest. That's where those two values come from. Now, most box of whiskers look like this. They can be written this way. I hardly ever see them written that way. But you can do it. You can go low to high <coughs> on a vertical axis. Just majority, I'd say 99% of the time I've ever seen one, it's always horizontal. Okay. Now, we talked about the range. This is the range from here to here. Again, we'll talk about that. From the minimum to the maximum, that is the range, low to high. But there's also this thing called the interquartile range, which is that box from Q1 to Q3. So the box is the interquartile range. So you have two ranges, the overall range of all the data and then you have the interquartile, inter meaning between, quartile, well, meaning quartile. So between the quartiles, Q1 and Q3. <coughs> so those are your two ranges. And this is very important. The IQR, this thing right here, is more reliable to use than the overall when there's outliers. Because that's not affected by the outliers. Okay, how do you construct it? Well, it's really easy when you're given the information. Okay, so median. You just put a line above 18.5. So 18.5 is right there. Okay? And then 16.5, you put another line. And at 19, you put another line. Now with those three lines, you make your box. The minimum, you put a line. The maximum, you put a line. And then you connect and draw your whiskers. Now, the range is not, listen carefully, the range is not 14 to 25. That's a very common mistake. Go, so, oh, well, look, you go to 14 to 25. No, that's the number line. Your data goes from here to here, 15 to 24. So the IQR is from here to here. So this is the IQR. And this is the just R range. So the IQR is 16.5 to 19. Again, if you wanted to, you could put 9 here, you could put 2.5. I'll accept either answer. I just like to say what the actual range is. 
Okay, given this plot, now we're going to work backwards. Okay, so what's the minimum value? Well, three. Just put that right there. What's the maximum value? 18. Right off the bat, we can calculate the range, can we? 3 to 18. Or 15. Either way. What's my Q1? Yep. What's my IQ3? 15. So I can do my IQR now. 4 to 15 or 11. No. Well, yeah, if you're writing that down, because it's either one or the other. You don't need to write both of them. But if you don't put R, then it's going to be 4, 4 to 15, 11. Uh, it doesn't ask for it, but what's the median? Yeah, let's write that down. It's at the top. Is it? Oh, it is at the top. Thank you. Like, something's missing. Thank you. Like, that doesn't make sense. I'll put it in. All right. That's just working backwards. So one way you're going from the chart to the box, box to the chart. Okay, now comparing them. It says, uh, below are box plots comparing the ages of brides in 2006. And in 2011, what can you conclude? Okay, so in 2006, it looks like the range was from like 16 to 51, 52, maybe. And in 2011, it went from about 20 to 16. Okay. So, what can you tell me about the two data sets? What about age-wise, age of the people getting married? What do you say between two years? They were getting married younger in 2006. Yeah, yeah. Younger in 2006, or you could say older in 2011. Right? They were generally older in 2011 or younger in 2006. Because, you know, 2011 goes all the way up to 60. You know, this line is right of that, the meat, this is right of that, and this is right of that. All the lines, every one of the markers, even even this one, right? Every one of the lines of the five number summary is right of the 2006. So all the data is up higher. So 2011 they were older, or 2006 they were younger. Either way you want to write it. Now it says, what can you conclude from comparing the interquartile range? Uh, well, let's see what their interpart now range was here. The it was like twenty one to thirty five, and twenty five to forty, about. So again, you can kind of say the same thing. Let's write it the other way. They were older in two thousand eleven. We kind of already talked about that, but all the data is older than 2011. Okay, here are the results for three schools in a history exam, which is about 40 points. Match the comments with each school's box plot. Okay, so we got to look for which school had the highest. This is weird. <coughs> Who had the highest, lowest score? Okay, Dunning had the lowest score. Which one had the highest, lowest score? Yeah. Lowest score, lowest score, lowest score. Which of those three had the highest of those scores? Great. Look, Dunning had a low score of about 11. That was probably like 12. This was like 18. Which number of those three is the highest? Oh. It's the highest low score. So of the low scores, comparing the three low scores, which one did the best at being the worst? You know, basically. Which one had the highest low score? 
Which one had the highest upper quartile? Remember, that's Q3. That's the right side of the box. It's close. It's really close. But it's Hampton. We just put an H. It's, I mean, it's probably like, you know, 32 to 31 or 33 to 32. So it's not by much. Which one had the most consistently high scoring? Hampton. Oh. Yeah. That was high school. They had the highest. The highest maximum. Right. Oh, the next one, yeah. So this is done. The highest median, that's that middle line. That's Hampton. And which one had the highest, lowest quartile, which is Q1? It's close. It's Dunning, probably by like one. If you look, go straight up, Dunning is just, you know, probably one more, 22 to 21. Hampton one. Yeah, Hampton had the most categories there. Okay, now, this one throws people for a loop. Listen carefully. The distribution of a box plot can be described using certain terms. Symmetrical. Symmetrical means the same on the left side and the right side. Okay, completely matching. Right? So, left side completely matched. So think about a parabola, right? It completely matches left side and right side. Every point over here has a matching point on the other side of the axis of symmetry. Right? We talk about parabolas. So symmetrical means the left matches the right. So if I drew a line right down in the middle, like, well, let's see if I can actually hit the middle, like that, I could fold that box and whisker plot, and this dot would match, would lay completely on that dot. This line would line up completely with that line. It would fold over completely. Okay? That's symmetrical. Here are the two. Here are the two that throw people off the most. And they get backwards all the time. And we just gotta think, if you think about real life, it'll make much more sense. To be skewed right, the box is larger on the right side because the median moves closer to the first quartile. Okay? So it's skewed right. On the one negatively skewed, skewed left, the box is larger on the left because the median moves closer to the third quartile. Okay? So you got people get this backwards all the time. They think, oh, well, you know, this line is longer. So it's, it, you know, no, I'm sorry. They think about, look, all the stuff is down here, so that's skewed left. They want to look where all of it is, okay? But you got to think about real life. So think about a class. If all, if most of the scores are down here, because people did really bad on the test, but then this person aced the test, which way is it pulling the data? It's skewing it to the right. Okay, you answer this question perfectly at the beginning, but once you see this, you'll get it backwards all the time. So you go, oh look, no, that, look where all the stuff is. And that's what I want you to think about in real life. If most of the data was low, okay, most of the data is on the left side, skewing means pulling away. Skewing is where's the outlier. So if most of the data is down here, but someone's up here, they're pulling the data to the right. If most of the data is up here, most of the relevant test, this person is doing what to the average? They're pulling it down. They're pulling it to the left. Okay? That's where people get it mostly backward. They see most of the data and want to say that's the way it's skewing. But skewing means away from the norm. So if somebody goes askew, that means they go away from the path. Okay, so someone veers off, 
that's going askew. They're going away from everyone else. So if someone walks their own path and leaves the group, they're going askew. They're leaving the, the bulk of the data, bulk of the people. Okay? 